Now this video was highly requested by my community in the two-way fam and a lot of you have been wanting to be a better lockdown defender, a clamp god out here. But that starts with your setup. And in NBA 2K20, we know how it is, man. If you don't have the badges, you don't get the results. And on that's unfortunately the situation that we have. And today, man, we're starting off right away, going ahead and talking about defensive badges that you should have in your arsenal each and every game you play. Now, for my 2v2 players, this can always vary because sometimes you're going against just pure guards and then you may be going against two bigs or a guard and a big. But this is mainly going to be for my people who are playing full court, 3v3, 5v5 comp scenarios that you're actually going to be running into multiple bodies and having to defend all over the floor. Now, if you are new to the channel, if you would do me a favor real quick and subscribe, also turn on those notifications by hitting that bell next to the subscribe button. And hey, man, I would truly appreciate it. And also like the video if you enjoy this. But starting off first, man, the first batch that I feel like is imperative, which means very, very important is clamps. If you have the badge points available, and this is also for my offensive threats, my play shots out there that maybe get 10 to 20 badge points, in some capacity have these badges equipped in some form or fashion. Clamps is gonna be one of the most important. Obviously, we know what it is at this time of the year. Defenders have access to quicker cutoff moves and are more successful when bumping or hip riding the ball handler. With this, guys, this is gonna help you play with intense IQ, especially when guys are trying to be screen setters and you wanna cut off that path in that pick when the guard is trying to go around it and you can easily bump them and throw off all the timing of the offense period. Guys wanna get up and down the floor. ISO players don't wanna be disrupted with their movements. And if you have this badge equipped, guys, this is gonna change the game automatically. And it can also get your teammates in great position to get interceptions and other easy steals. So Clamps is gonna be one of those badges that is a must have all the time. Now the next badge, Intimidator. Now we know what this badge is all about and it's unfortunate because in the previous 2Ks you actually had a shot contest rating. But this time around we have a badge tied to shot contest. And obviously with the description, offensive players have less success shooting when contested by players with this badge. Also boost the shot defense ratings when tightly guarding an opponent. So this can literally disrupt all animations when you're close enough to a guy trying to contest. Or even if you jump at it, this has actually helped me to block more shots than I normally would if I didn't have this badge equipped, especially if you time your jump correctly. So Intimidator is one of those badges that I believe that every build has to have. Look, if you only have seven defensive badge points, you need to have this at least on silver or gold over any other badge because people who say that this badge doesn't work but they can run with it without it, those are the people that are getting 100% smothered green in their face and then they're frustrated at 2K. Now for my lockdown guys that at least like to get some damage at the rim, especially even guards, this is the badge that you want to have at the minimum silver. The reason why is because I feel like this badge is more responsive at silver and it pairs well with Intimidator and Chase Down Artist. So with that guys, Rim Protector is gonna be one of those badges that you have to have equipped if you have at least 10 or more defensive badge points. And the reason is, is because it improves a player's ability to block shots, unlock special block animations, and gives a boost to the takeover meter for the blocker and the blocker's teammates following a block. So this also improves your teammates' ability to get their takeover as well. I've had bigs on my team that are rim protectors or glass cleaners. When they have this badge equipped and they get a block, somehow my takeover is filling up and that actually benefits the entire team. So with this badge, man, you're not being a selfish player and you're actually being more beneficial than you think you are. And of course, getting those animations that you're looking for at the rim, especially with interior defense being very questionable in 2K20, man, rim protector is one of those badges it's a must have. Now we all know about this badge, man. Chase down artists. In some capacity, you need to have this badge at the minimum on bronze. And that's even for my guys that have only eight to nine defensive badge points. Chase down artists is just gonna be one of those badges that gives you an opportunity to catch up to the offensive player. There have been a lot of situations with players that don't have the downhill badge on that is a playmaking badge, of course, that if you have chase down artists on, this gives you a chance to compete at the rim. And of course, you can get those blocks or opportunities to get great shot contests to help your teammate. 
and with that man it boosts the speed and leaping ability of a player when he is chasing down an offensive player in anticipation of a block attempt i always have examples of getting it in a game and if I don't have it equipped, I notice the difference in my player and he just doesn't have that pop to him, especially when somebody blows by you. This is what that badge is going to do for you. It's just going to make you that much more of a demigod type defender where you're literally all over the floor. And if you want to have this badge up even at gold tier or hall of fame, it's going to make you even more deadly all over the floor and chase down artists is necessary. Now this is an underrated badge in my opinion because a lot of people don't value this because they want to get cheesed out of animations instead of trying to purposely use their stick skill to fight out of the moves. And that's pick dodger man. I've used this badge in comp pro-am scene all the way to 2v2 and 3v3 and when I have my teammates that don't have this badge equipped or claim that it doesn't work, you're not going to have this badge bail you out by just running straight into a screen. You guys got to stop doing that that are lockdown defenders. You have to find a way to work in front or behind the screen and that's when this badge is going to shine at its highest. You just have to use it in a more strategic way and I know that's not what people want to hear. but it really does work and it's a lot of times that I've been able to shut down a lot of guards that want to get crazy on ISO with this badge, especially when they have a glass clean lock with Hall of Fame brick wall. So with that guys, pick Dodger man, it improves a player's ability to navigate through and around screens while on defense. So at this point in the video, you see we got seven available upgrades and you also saw a lot of the clips of examples that I've used when using these badges. The next one will be Interceptor. Now, even having this badge on bronze, we all know what it is. And unfortunately, from 2K20 on down from 1918, you can pretty much just spam the passing lane with no punishment. And with that, guys, Interceptor is one of those badges that I would say have equipped. I've been known in the past to take advantage of the mechanics in 2K20. Do I hate the fact that you can spam without being punished, rather that's animations or stamina? Yes, but as far as Interceptor, man, it's one of those badges you have to have. The frequency of successfully tipped or intercepted passes greatly increases. Now for my players that complain a lot about interior defense or wanting to stop players that play so close to the rim, Pogo Stick is gonna bail you out. I know a lot of people don't run this badge, but these are from my lock locks out there. I'm talking about 17 defensive badge points and up, or even 16. Run this at the minimum on silver, because this is gonna bail you out of bad situations where somebody's hitting you with the cheesiest pump fakes in the world or you just prematurely jump way too early you're gonna get bailed out by this badge alone and also it'll give you the athleticism that you feel like you deserve to jump back a second and a third time and give you a chance to contest the shot pogo stick man once i found out what it could do probably seven months ago i never let go of this badge it literally is one of those badges that even if i'm in pro-am or rec i'll have it at least on bronze just in case those situations where somebody's going to the basket and they want to try to cheese pump fakes i'm ready to jump each and every time with them now a lot of people disagree with this badge because they feel like it's more rng based versus skill or attribute based and honestly having pickpocket at least on silver i used to have this badge on gold and hall of fame and i did not see the benefit of having it that high but having it on silver man you get those cheesy picks and poke ball free animations that you're looking for when you have this badge on, especially against cheesy dribblers that actually have unpluckable on gold or hall of fame, or at least on silver, you can counter that with this and also great positioning on the floor. Not having this badge, man, I found myself getting a lot more fouls on situations that I'm thinking my still rating should be enough and I should be able to get that, but we know how 2K operates. You at least need this badge available to you on silver. That way you can get those animations necessary and also those cheesy pickball freeze. This is a solid setup for anybody that maybe has 18, 19 defensive badge points. But for those of us that have 20 or more, this is what's going to separate you as a true clamp god or somebody who can guard one through four with ease and you have the IQ ability to do it. Now the next badge, a lot of you are gonna be surprised by this, but this has helped me out in a lot of situations just to contest some bigs and also guards who think they can try to post me up. And that's moving truck. I tried this badge about a month ago. 
And what it does is that it strengthens a defender's ability to move people around in the post. Now, the badge actually has a different description. Players are more effective pushing opponents out of the post while playing defense. And with that, guys, there have been situations where I've gone against playmaking glass cleaners or three level scores at the small forward position that have a little bit more strength and less speed. In those situations where they try to back me up, especially at the elbow, I'm literally like an iron wall. This reminds me of Bruiser a little bit from 2K19, where at that time you can also get those strong animations, but then you would also drain their energy. Moving Truck is one of those badges that is extremely slept on, and even at bronze, if you're running around a 60 strength rating or 58 or 64, just in between that range of 55 to 65, right? Bronze Moving Truck is just so beneficial in those situations, man. And last but not least, man, is Rebound Chaser. Now, this is specifically for those that get 19 defensive badge points and up. And with that guys, I'm not a big fan of this badge personally because I don't use it on my 3v3 and 5v5 scenarios because most of my builds already have a 92 defensive rebound or 95 defensive rebound and these are guards we're talking about here. And it's just amazing that the ratings are that high for guards to get defensive boards. But with this man, you're gonna get animations that you're not expecting to get even over taller opponents even glass cleaners in some situations because you may have a higher vertical than them to be able to go get the ball. So obviously it improves a player's ability to track down rebounds from a further distance than normal. This is gonna help you survive and also make the plays necessary that you need to make, man. Uh, I see a lot of people not run this setup and it actually surprises me when they make a justification of why they would run a different badge and for instance, guys will say they're running lightning reflexes and they're wasting three to four badge points on this when all it tells you is an indicator on if they're going left or right. If you already have IQ and you're using your eyes, honestly, you don't need to waste badge points on that. Or if you're wasting it on box and you're not a big, it's all about positioning. I found myself being a guard I can get double double rebound sometimes without having rebound chase or a box on but I'm not trying to toot my own horn I'm just kind of trying to say maximize your badges as much as possible and then sometimes let your ratings do the talking for you so if you have an 85 defensive rebound don't run box and worm and all that if you only have 18 or 17 or 16 defensive badge points invest in these this core if if there was a core group of badges that I would say you should have, this should be your core right here and nothing else. The reason why, man, is because you're gonna be a reliable on-ball defender. You're gonna be a nightmare at the rim as far as pogo stick and trying to contest shots. And also, you're gonna be able to switch and get some crazy blocks at the rim with chase down artists. And if you are just going into a rec or pro-am and you have 25 plus defensive badge points, be leader man you're making your teammates better all the way around and you're doing damage so with that guys if you made it to this point in the video and you enjoyed the clips the breakdowns the conversation i definitely want to know from you guys in the comment section what setup are you running with and why i'm just curious and i also want to know from you guys in the two-way fam but if this helped you in the slightest man make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications because I would truly appreciate it. And we're on the road to try to get to 80K, man, some light. So with that, guys, I appreciate you. Make sure to leave two-way in the comment section if you made it to this point. And hey, I'll see you in the next one.